I'm Mike Dimas, and this is Pinball Shenanigans. Hello, hello. Today I am going to try and repair an opto board on this X-Files. It is the filing cabinet opto. Um, there's actually two identical opto board units. One is in front of the filing cabinet and one just below it for the magnet. So the one board set, there's one on each side held together by a bracket. Let's throw on the flash here. Um, so there's two of these exact units, one for magnet, one for filing cabinet. I deemed this one to be faulty. So what I did was I took the magnet one and I put it in front of the filing cabinet. So the filing cabinet actually works. And strangely enough, the magnet does too without this in it. But for whatever reason, they designed two different um, sets of optos, one for each. But the way I have it kind of rigged, it totally works. So I'm not really sure. Anyway, these Sega Stern LEDs, they operate differently than the Williams ones. They're called like ultra bright LEDs actually here. Let's see. Red five millimeter T1 three quarter round. Uh, on the description on the Marco website, I believe it calls them ultra bright or ultra red. And that's because you can, when the transmitter is transmitting light, you can actually see it with your naked eye, which you cannot on the Williams style. And also, the transmitter and receiver on these are both the identical part number. On Williams, you got a specific part number for your transmitter and a specific part number for your receiver. Often, one is kind of clear and the other one's kind of more dark or black. But these guys are all the same for transmitting and receiving. So I got four, just in case. I believe that so when this is plugged in i do get one of the leds i can't remember which side does light up so the transmitter is working but it's not registering a switch test so i am basically blaming the receiver which actually i believe is this side so that's my suspicion i hope i'm correct i've got the parts to fix it hopefully but here, I can show you what I'm talking about. See the red light right there? Right there. That is the transmitter, which obviously you can see illuminated with your naked eye. Otherwise, with Williams, you have to hold up your camera and look at the opto through the camera in order to see whether it's lit or not. And that's how you can kind of tell which one is transmitter and receiver too, if you don't know. So, you can see on the other side here that that looks lit up, but it's really just the light from the transmitter beaming across. Wait, sorry, wrong side. There, you can just see under, um, that's uh, Scully's foot, little, LED there with a bit of light on it. So that's how you can tell too that it's aligned well because the red light is right at the tip of the opto there. So I guess um, I'm going to just change the opto. Uh, maybe I'll just show you quickly what Pinwiki has to say. They actually use um, an X-Files as an example here to show that uh, the transmitter is visible with the naked eye and they've got the boards kind of swapped. So the transmitter is on the other side for the magnet. So that's why that one is not illuminated. But yeah, there's a little bit of information here on pin wiki, which is very helpful. I guess this is called the long hop opto board and Note that the ultra red LED on the transmitter side is not lit until power is applied. Well, that makes sense. 
Failure on the receiver opto is more common. And it also says somewhere how you can use the same part for both sides, but I won't bore you with all that. And it talks about how it's a little different than Bally Williams, opto pairs. But yeah, so that is how these Sega Stern optos work. I'm going to go ahead and replace the receiver on my board and see if that solves my problem and it is kind of recommended to change these out in pairs but i know this works so i'm not going to so i'm just going to change this guy out i mean this guy out and see what happens here's the part on the marco website it goes under a bunch of different part numbers the mv8114 is kind of a common one this is more of the stern part number or sega and at marco they're two bucks which is a little expensive for these things because i think when great plains electronics were around they were more like 50 cents but they are no longer okay just for fun i have hooked up the faulty board and you can see that um the indicator light for power is showing that it is working and the transmitter light is illuminated and there is the receiver but uh, just for fun let's put this in switch test and we'll test um, both optos for fun so this says filing cabinet opto like i said i tricked the machine into believing that is actually for the magnet and watch this work now for some strange reason aha uh -huh. see we got nothing absolutely nothing happening there so we know we've got power we know we've got transmission we have no reception so Going to go ahead and change this one on the same side as that LED side there. So now I know which one for sure to remove. So I had to try and research to remember which side is positive and negative because it does matter. So I pulled up the MV, where is it? 8114 data sheet. So it tells me that the flat side is cathode, and then I had to Google that cathode is the negative side. So now we know the flat side is the negative side, which is, so I was trying to find out if it's the long leg or the short leg, but I'm guessing, yeah, negative is probably the short leg. So long is positive. All right, now hopefully the board shows me on the circuit board itself, which side is positive, which side is negative. Let's see, it doesn't show on that side. And there's long opto description. Uh, let's turn on this and this. Do you see a flat side on that? There it is there. Let's see. Does it look like there's a flat side? It's kind of hard to tell. Maybe these ones don't. So it doesn't really matter. We'll just go with long leg equals positive. All right. Okay, here's the suspect opto has been removed and the new one is installed. I'm just guessing that the trace that goes to this leg here, which comes around here and here and here, and this is one of the four pin connectors, and here I'm assuming that's ground. It makes sense to me that it would every component needs a ground and then this guy here on the top side 
it connects to this little IC chip. So I'm guessing that orientation is correct. We got negative cathode long side is positive. So we'll plug it in and see what happens. Clip these guys off. I'll clip them a little bit long just for now. Just in case. And if it works, then I'll trim those right down. Okay, here goes nothing. Let's go into switch test. Into the portals diagnostic tool. Alright, here's switch test. Let's just, for posterity's sake, check the filing cabinet. Still good. And now... Ready for it? I'm about 50-50 on whether this is going to work or not, so let's check out the display. Here we go. Oh no! That did not work. Okay, now, the fun part is figuring out a why, and uh, I'll have to dig for an answer on this. Could be some other component on the board. Um, maybe I'll check the resistors and whatnot. But it uh, could be that little IC chip, little mini transistor there, or whatever that is. So I gotta dig deeper. Okay, it's been a few days but I'm back at this opto issue and okay, I'm learning stuff. I'm on to something here. So this LED indicates that this thing is getting power. This LED, when it is solid, is indicating that the switch is closed. So right now it thinks the switch is closed. But if I kind of just pry this apart just a little bit. Just change the angle. It's not as easy with one hand. Come on now. All right, there we go. No. Just gotta find the sweet spot. Okay, so actually I'm squeezing it together. So, that top right opto is now off. Therefore the switch is open, right? And now I'm gonna try and close it. There we go. Oh, okay, so you can see my theory here that there it is. Basically, I don't know if that was an issue to begin with, this opto that I replaced but it may have very well just been an alignment issue the whole time. Because in hindsight, I did see that there was a washer in one of these screws splots here. <clears throat> one of these, on one of these screws, I saw that there was a washer before and I removed it because I'm like, that is not factory. Why is there one odd washer? And well, I think now I know why it is there, probably to fix an alignment issue. So, was it an alignment issue all along, or was it this receiver opto? We will never know. But the good news is that with a little bit of tweaking, I can get my filing cabinet opto back up and running. So I'm going to reassemble this and my magnet. Put a, probably a washer in here or somehow adjust this uh, so that it's solid. I think I might even reflow the power headers too, while I have this out. Um, but yeah, I am on to something, like I said, so should be close to a resolution here. Okay, I think I have the alignment finally happy. What I did was I started with a washer, just this little baby guy right here, and I put it between the screw and the PCB here. Now you can see that is not a washer because the washer was just a little bit too thick and it wasn't aligning, it was too, um, they were pointing in a little too much and you just touched these guys and they would um, register. So I kind of made a washer out of 
just a little piece of cardboard that was thinner. And I've got it to the point where squeezing it a little bit doesn't make it go off and stretching it a little bit doesn't make it go off. That's me actually, I can stretch a little bit. Eh, that's me actually triggering the opto, but if I squeeze hard enough, then yeah. So I think I've got it. So the only way to really know is to put it all back together again and play 50 games, but uh, I will reassemble it and then do one final test and then should be done with it. All right, everything's put back together. Now for the final test, I'll roll up the ball and should see a magnet and cabinet switch. Let's zoom out a bit here. All right. Magnet opto, filing cabinet. I think we're good to go. So it may have been an alignment issue, but initially when I was testing, I did kind of squeeze and change the alignment back and forth a little bit to see if that was the issue initially. And that wasn't working. So I think it might've been a combination of alignment and a bad receiver opto. So there you have it. Uh, my X-Files is now 100% working.